Welcome back to the second part of Lecture 5, Week 6 of Ethics and Corporate Social Responsibility in which we're looking at the relationship between companies and consumers. One of the things that we're going to look at now, or the thing that we're going to look at now is issues related to advertising. The first half we were looking at issues related to product safety, pricing, price fixing and labelling. So we're going to look at advertising um, in the next uh, little while. There are three objectives in this structure, but objective, uh, objective four, five and six. Objective five speaks specifically about some legal issues, the legal context in which Australia's consumer's law operates, consumer law operates. So in lecture four, in, for that objective, um, I've got two videos plus a link to the advertising um, standards. They're two external um, links from the Global Law Alliance, one which discusses a, just a quick four minute overview of the key aspects of the legal environment that regulates advertising in Australia. And the other one talks about four specific cases from 2018, 2019, um, about uh, that, that talks about some of the legal issues that um, firms may face as exemplars of the legal structure in which business operates in terms of advertising in Australia. The link, as I said, is to add standards which outlines the self-regulation of advertising in Australia in the non-broadcast media. So... Objective four, what are the, identify and discuss deceptive and morally questionable techniques used in advertising. Now, there's always a value judgment here. We're teaching this from an ethics and social responsibility perspective. I'm sure you, many of you have done a marketing and advertising topic that takes it from a different perspective. That marketing advertising topic may in fact have slightly different viewpoints about the professional ethics than related to advertising that I'm going to present here today. But let's start with some basic ideas. Advertising is not designed to inform customers. Advertising is designed to sell you goods and services. Most advertisements do not provide factual information. And sometimes they use deceptive techniques to persuade us to buy products. Now, none of that will come as a shock to any of you in this room. Or, well, actually, not in this room. Huddled over your PC or mobile device listening to this lecture, watching this lecture. How do they get away with not providing factual information? How do they deceive us? Well, they use particular words. They use words that are deceiving or words that are misleading. An idiom for these words is weasel words. Something helps to prevent. Well, sports drink help to prevent dehydration. Possibly no more than water helps to prevent dehydration. But all the additives they put into that sports drink, which means you pay more for it, helps to prevent dehydration. Something lasts up to four up to eight hours. So anything between, say, one second and seven minutes and fifty nine seven hours and fifty nine minutes is up to eight hours. Kills virtually all germs. Well, what's virtually all? Provides more than. Well, is more than better? So weasel words are used to create ambiguous um, positions. Secondly, it uh, is used to exploit consumers... <clears throat> pardon me, exploit consumers through the use of 
facts that are concealed. Hiding facts about the product, the goods and services, so that the fact is constricted or distorted or does not provide a truthful description, a truthful objective presentation of the product. Now, we've all been to, and well, I don't know whether you all have, but if you go to um, websites so, um, like um, uh, the Australian um, Review Centre, Australian National Review, you'll find all these reviews of the product, Australian product review, but they're just paid advertising. They're extended advertorials. Are any of these ratings and product review agencies that are online independent other than choice? Are the claims are made about the product supported by facts? Are they supported by evidence? Provides extra pain relief. What does extra pain relief mean? Just recently, Nurofen, for example, was talking about targeted pain relief. You would pay a lot more for Nurofen, which is just ibuprofen, that was targeted for back pain or migraine pain or knee pain or flu pain. It was the same product. You were just paying more because supposedly it was targeted. 50% stronger than. Well, is 50% stronger worthwhile? Works five times faster. Well, how did they come up with the five times faster? Was it just reporting? Was it a survey of people? Was it a survey of one person that worked in the office that said, hmm, that seems to be like it's working five times faster for me? They use the concept of puffery. If something's the king of beers, the breakfast of champion. When Holden was still being sold in Australia, and now we know it's about not to be, it was, I like kangaroos, meat pies, and Holden cars. And there was this song. There was their advertising song to make Holden appear incredibly Australian. And the exact same song was available in America, substituting hot dogs for meat pies and Chevrolet for Holden cars and in other countries that, that they operated in. Puffery. Exaggeration and puffery and claims unsupported by evidence are often linked to concealment of facts. Right, the next thing to look at in advertising is how it uses psychological appeals. How it makes you more powerful because you're wearing a Hugo Boss suit. How it makes it it's more prestigious because you have a particular type of um, bag. Hey, if you use links, that will mean you're more attractive to people who like the smell of links. It appeals to masculinity or femininity. Hey, people pay more for a pink razor blade than a blue razor blade from Bic because the pink one is for women. It's a more feminine colour. The reverse often happens too in that particular category. That this product will make you be part of the group that will give you social acceptance or the approval of others. All of, this, all of these are psychological appeals that may in fact be based, not on fact, not on product performance, but just on human emotion. We also have issues related to advertisements. Advertisements, see I come from South Australia. We say advertisements when the word is really advertisements. Advertisements directed at kill children. Many children influence the products that their parents buy. Whether it's pester power for Happy Meals and McDonald's, or whether it's 
pester power related to a particular car. And you look at some car advertising and it's very kid centric and focuses on kids safety or kids space or kids ability to be okay in the back seat. Things that attract kids because they'll pester their parents or they'll pester their mother or they'll pester both of their parents to get a particular car. Because advertisers also have identified that children are future consumers. So if you can get them early and get them committed to a particular brand, they may stay with that brand. They may be loyal to that brand. And also children are less worldly, more cynical, are less, na- less cynical, more naive and gullible. And consequently, they can be more easily manipulated by advertising. Which brings us to objective five, the role of regulating bodies in Australia and the regulatory framework within Australia. So as I mentioned, I've given three resources for this that are not part of this lecture. They're just extended, or they are part of the lecture, but they're just separate videos. We've got the two videos from the Global Alliance, and we've got as well as that, the link to the Ad Standards Australia uh, website, uh, which outlines the regulatory framework of advertising in Australia. The two videos separate the self-regulation and the regulatory requirement. Of course, the first video, the second video outlines the um, some examples of recent um, issues in advertising, recent cases, and how they've been dealt with by the courts. And then the advertising standards website gives you a link that describes the advertising standards in Australia. So let's talk a little bit about the social desirability of advertising. Because what I've done in the objective four is outline well the problems and the issues and the concerns we might have about the purpose and nature of advertising. And in objective five, you get some idea of the limitations and strengths of the Australian advertising regulatory environment. And we're going to talk about those things as well in the tutorial. So let's look about whether advertising is in fact socially desirable or whether it's just manipulative, whether there are positive aspects to advertising or whether it's just manipulative within our system. So the argument for advertising is that advertising satisfies our deeper needs and wants. Advertisements, advertisements, elevate our spirits. They make us feel good. They make us feel positive. Sometimes they're even better than a TV show that you're watching. TV shows with ads. I know some of you don't watch them. That's what you used to have on the TV before Netflix. The arguments against advertising is advertising creates the very wants and needs that we seek to satisfy. There is a dependence effect that not only influences the nature of the television programs that we watch or the nature of what is produced, but also the nature of, um, of what we consume. And because of our dependence on particular types of products that are created by advertising, because of, of the creation of what is arguably false needs, we end up being in a dependent relationship with the advertiser. And materialism outweighs our expenditure on public services in society. So if you're defending advertising from an economic perspective, you say, well, it's necessary for economic growth. And when we talk about the economy and the environment in a couple of weeks, we'll balance the need for economic growth and environmental impact. They see advertising as a, free, a part of free communication, a free competition in a competitive argument. They argue that loyalty is not only about um, uh, the advertising, it's also about the product quality. Critics of advertising, people who criticise advertising, argue 
that advertising promotes brand loyalty against rational price competition. By distorting the nature and the differentiation of ultimately identical products, you get price distortion. So why do we have bottled water in plastic containers and why does the nature of that water vary from 50 cents a bottle for Coles and Woolworths up to $7 for Fiji? Because when it's essentially water, because of the branding of that water, promoting brand loyalty to that water over the actual worth of the product inside, which we can get free from a tap. Well, near free from a tap. They maintain advertising as a waste of resources and services because all it does is raise the price of advertised goods rather than give any benefit to people in society. Now, there's a third counterpoint that fits somewhere between it, but it's a third counterpoint that goes beyond just advertising, that advertising is about free speech, and we should not limit free speech in a free society. That being said, even if advertising is about free speech, do, we, do advertisers have the right to mislead people? Is it morally justifiable to mislead people? Is it morally justifiable to target consumers, even if it's justifiable under a, to target consumers, to target ch children, even if it is a legal right to do so? Is free speech absolute? Okay. So what have we discussed in part A and part B of this lecture, part one and two of this lecture? We spent part one looking at the issue of product safety and legal and moral responsibilities of manufacturers and the pros and cons of government regulation and the responsibility that business has to consumers. And then I provided two videos related to the diesel gate issues related to VW and other German manufacturers as examples of those areas, in addition to the examples I'd included in the lecture. In part two of the lecture, we talked about deceptive and morally questionable techniques in advertising. We talked about the regulatory bodies, though you still have to go and look at the, three, the two videos and website related to that area. And we discussed social desirability of advertising from a number of different perspectives. Tutorial activities are listed on the Moodle website. The forum activity for next week is also listed. I will see you um, in the tutorial this week and then next week. Bye for now.